Hey, Matt Nice to meet you. I'm the uh, head of HR for Okay, I apologize for the attire. I didn't realize it was going to be a corporate. <laughs> I mean, I try to dress more casually as well when I come out to the project. So, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good, good. Uh, thanks for taking the time to, to meet with us. I came in specifically to, to be able to sit with you and okay. uh, talk about the situation. And uh, Teresa's just grabbing her notebook. And I know you've been speaking with her uh, uh, about the, the overall situation and, and I can walk you through sort of the company's sort of approach to, to these kinds of things and we can talk about you know, okay. the future as well. Okay. Wait for sure. Teresa to join us here. Uh, I'm hoping for some warmer weather here in New York, but not much. All right. Oh, you came down from New York for it? Okay. How's the weather up there? Uh, about the same? About the same, yeah. It hasn't been very cold this winter, it's nice, but... Uh, Until now. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's coming. So first, you know, as a company, we very much appreciate when an employee stands up and brings something forward. It gives us an opportunity to correct a situation that, you know, we, we try to put the right people in place to oversee all matters and make the right decisions. But from time to time, there are situations where we need to be notified and, and the corrective action needs to be taken. So when you first raised the concerns, um, you know, I'm not an environmental expert by any measure, nor is Teresa. Even Alaji, as our uh, EHS director, you know, is, is more on the safety side than the environmental. Sure. So we, we discussed it, and, and it was, you know, um, we involved Gretchen, who's the project counsel here as well. Okay. And we thought the best approach would be, okay, let's, let's start with somebody internal within the company to take an initial look at the situation. And, and I think you met Rob, right? Yes. Um, so Rob has also uh, worked in a similar capacity as, as Carissa uh, at one of our other projects. Okay. So he started looking at things and, and what quickly became clear is, okay, well, Rob has a foundational knowledge of environmental law, but there are, you know, specifics to this project, sure. to this owner, to this location. And so he said, okay, well, maybe then what we need to do is engage some assistance from outside the organization. Sure. And we obtained um, a name of an environmental lawyer. Okay. And what we asked him to do was review the, the reporting log that you guys have been maintaining for sure. the life of the project. And with a specific focus on a couple of incidences that Rob had identified sure. as being areas of concern. And what we needed to understand from the lawyer was, okay, well, what, what are the requirements? What are the legal requirements here? Right? What does our permit allow us to do? I don't know any of these things. Sure. And so we had the lawyer review this, and it, it did take some time sure. uh, to, to go through that much material and get the details and, and go into it. And you know, I think at the end of the day, what the lawyer has determined is that there, there may be some issues on that side of the fence, right? Sure which has not been yet presented to Carissa. It's something that's been sitting with the, the guys upstairs. Sure. Um, and, and I had conversations with them to say, okay, so as a project, we need to take this report, digest it, and endorse it and say, this is what we want to see happen, right? We want to see the rules followed explicitly in this way. We wanted to make certain from our perspective that some of these issues are not open for interpretation. Sure. Um, you know, and I've learned a little bit about environmental during the process, <laughs> uh, but still, not my area of expertise. I, I am a lawyer by background, but not not that kind. Okay. Um, so, on the flip side, right, while that was going on, you came forward with additional concerns related to her in general, and right. so that's when Teresa and I started to have conversations, both with yourself and some of your colleagues, some of the ones that were willing to speak to us, sure. um, and Carissa as well. And and I think the, the the approach that we took was, okay, let's try to identify what are the areas that, that you're concerned about, how long has those kinds of things been going on, what, and what, what, what can we attribute that to, right? Sure. Is it her failings as a manager, right? And, and a, a management style that doesn't necessarily work well for everyone in the sure. team. And how do we address that going forward? And so that's the point we're at right now today, okay. uh, that we are working as a team, right, both in corporate, and I have a learning development team that works in my department in corporate okay. to support people in this situation. They're going to provide a curriculum about some trainings, and this is something that she's been very receptive to. Okay. So I see hope there, right? right. I, I see hope that we can move forward in a productive way in this situation. Um, 
But the most important thing to me and to Teresa and to all of us in Dragados in this project is that you feel able to continue to come to work and do your job sure. free of interference. Sure. Um, that doesn't mean that you know she's not able to manage you, right? And this is what our challenge is on the, on the other side, is to work behind the scenes to make sure that there, there, we separate um, any activity that could be viewed as punishment against you, right? That's sure. something we, we don't, we will not accept. And, and that's been made clear and it will be repeatedly made clear um, from regular workplace interactions. And sure. this, is, this is oftentimes the hardest part of these situations is finding out a way to move forward together, right? Sure. Um, I'm sure there's some trepidation and fear on your side and I'm sure there's some frustration on hers and, and what we have to do is figure out a way to sort of let those things simmer down to a point where we can get back to a productive working relationship. Sure. And that means that, that there don't have to be changes in, in, in things that are going on and uh, you know, I, I, I wish that it was as simple as you know making a recommendation and having that be adopted, but we're we're talking about human behavior. Sure. <laughs> so changing human behavior overnight is right. is you know um, not something that is uh, impossible, right? So sure. we have to work at it, and 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 that doesn't mean you have to work at it. It means we have to work at it uh, alongside Carissa as your manager. Sure. So I think the purpose of meeting today was to to share with you from the company's perspective some of the steps we've taken and, and some of the steps you know are private between us and her, right? Okay. Because that's that's her employment situation that we discuss with her privately. But to also give you the opportunity to understand that, you know, obviously this is something we take very seriously, all of these matters. Sure. The people that work for us and work hard for us on our projects are our our biggest strength and to have somebody feel that they are in a uncomfortable or unhealthy working environment because of um, what's going on and, and because of how they're being managed is something that you know we take not just seriously but also personally as HR pro professionals that this is something that is our job to fix. Sure. Um, some of the ways we do that is by you know being a resource to the manager. Okay, that I have this situation. How do I handle it? What do I need to do? How do I approach this? And, but we're also a resource to you. Sure. I'm frustrated or she you know, is, is picking on me for X, Y, Z, let's talk it through. Sure. So because a lot of times what I've found is some of these situations come down to communication. And I know there was, Teresa was sharing with me, you know, stuff that's happened over the last few days, right? Sure. And you were given something to do on Friday and maybe the instructions you were given weren't as clear as they should have been. Absolutely not, it felt, and, felt like a setup. Right, and, and, and so, I guess the question is, has that happened before, right? Where you were given instructions that weren't? No? Okay. No. Um, and uh, I do ask if there's any allegations against me. You saw how detailed I detailed out my Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I can do the same with any uh, other allegations. Um, the last issue that I was aware of um, was on Halloween. Uh, Halloween, the, you know, the afternoon of Halloween. <clears throat> and. Um, it was about, and I can check the, the actual time, it was like 3.26 or something. Um, Carissa was out of the office. Uh, I sent her a text asking it would be, if it would be okay, um, since it's Halloween, if I were to um, cut out a little bit early uh, and go uh, you know, spend some time with my son. At the time, my wife and I were separated. I was staying in an Airbnb for 30 days. I didn't have anything set up for the house, or the strobe light or anything else for the kid. I wanted to get there you know, uh, and set up some stuff for him. Um, so I didn't get a reply until about four o'clock. Uh, so I gave her a call um, and it wasn't answered as well. So I was like, well, you know, I know, I know wh how she is. Um, and I waited till 4.30 uh, before I, I sent her a text. Again, um, we were supposed to get off at five. At 4.30 I sent her a text saying, um, you know, hey, uh, I hope this is gonna be okay. I could take leave if you need me to, um, but I decided uh, you know, to go ahead and cut out at 4.30 since I hadn't heard back from you. And she completely blew up about it um, via text. And then uh, it felt like she was just trying to, to, to elicit something out of me. She was just trying to get a response with the text and how we went back and forth. I ended up spending like an hour, hour and a half texting her, rear-ended some guy on the way home because of the stress from it. Um, and you know, an hour and a half while I'm sitting there, my son's walking up ahead with my wife, uh, doing a Halloween thing. I'm trying to, to calm uh, whatever the situation is. 
Um, and that was when I threw myself at her feet. I, and I can show you all these messages. Um, I apologized and, and just said, I had no idea. I'm not used to an environment like this. I've been in a more uh, professional environment uh, most of my life, working for the state, working for the city. Um, and then she hung on to that. And, uh, uh, what were her issues? <laughs> as if, as if you were. Uh, no, she held on to the um, the professional yeah. side to. Like an insult almost, as, right? right? Yes, as to say that it. we're not. Yeah, or, and that she turned it into education. You know, and, and was trying to, to down on me for the education. Was talking about how she's, you know, one class away from a PhD and. And you know some of the others don't have an education. Um, I've got a, a bachelor's. Chris has got a bachelor's. Katie's got a bachelor's. Ron is the only one who doesn't have a, a, you know any kind of degree. He's earned everything that he's gotten there. He's been there for two years. Um, so it wasn't uh, you know made to be like that. And, and she completely she completely latched onto that. Yeah. And then she'll go back and she'll tell the others. And, and I've, I've like seven eight times I've had to go to them. It's like no, this is not how it happened. You know here here and here. And then they see how it actually happened. But she'll take and she'll twist things to fit her narrative. I can understand why that's, you know, a very a difficult situation to navigate, especially, you know, being relatively new to the project at that point in right this October and you started what in August? August. Yep. Yeah. Um, there are no allegations against you. Yep. That's not what this is about in any way, shape, or form. Sure. Um, at no point during this process has anyone raised allegations against you. Okay. So um, that I want to be clear sure. about that. I, I honestly believe since I have been here, I have done absolutely nothing that even warrants being pulled aside and talked mm -hmm. to. Um, I, I had no idea that that was going to be the reaction on, you know, Halloween. Right. Uh, it was almost like, right. it's almost like she wanted to pick a fight for some reason. Right. But that was well before any of these issues that were coming up today. Correct. So, um, yeah. Since that time, I've tried to be, ever since I threw myself at her feet at that time, I just said, you know, hey, I am completely sorry. I'll do whatever, you know, I'll, yeah. I've changed. I'll do whatever we, you know, that needs to happen for that. The whole conversation on my end was like, uh, lighthearted. Um, and I, again, I'll show you guys the, the text com conversation. Um, but since then I have, uh, it, I, I've noticed I was on her radar. I have been spotless since October the 30th. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't came in, or I haven't asked for uh, any additional time off since then, I haven't set up a a, um, a doctor's appointment that wasn't already approved by her. Um, and I, I, coming in to work, I'm 15 minutes early every single time. I'm the first one there now. Um, and I wasn't coming in later any, than anybody else or, around the project. You know, everybody comes in seven, 10, 15 minutes late on occasions. It just happens. Um, but I've been just doing everything I can, and I, I continue to feel like I'm getting hurt in my workplace. Um, I'm a forty. <laughs> I'm, I'm a forty-two year old man. I'm a marine. You know, I'm, I'm a rough and tough guy. I am, uh, but I still, uh, you know, I have feelings. And uh, she was married. Uh, she's told us she was married to a narcissistic marine at one point in time in her life. Um, and I don't know if she just sees if she sees that maybe I might have some of those behaviors or something. But I, I, I am. You know, I, I have a very good temperament. Um, yeah, I, I feel like, I, I literally feel like I haven't done anything wrong. You, do you think it's a personal issue she has with you? I don't. I think it's not necessarily a per personal issue that she has with me. But prior to me getting there, Ronnie has mentioned that, that she has done the same things to him previously. Um, I think I'm the new target. And once I am gone, if I were to leave or were to be let go from her, who's the next target? Probably Chris. The next guy in the office, um, but she she it's it's horrible there. Uh, she just talks about everybody behind their back. Um, she talks about the project managers, talks about every other supervisor on the project. The office is so tense all the time, yeah. like it's anybody. Yes, there, Bakari. Um, you said it, when she opens the door, everybody just like tight, tightens up. So obviously, those are the kinds of issues that are going to take you know some some work to to correct. Um, yeah. But I want to I want to separate the issues that you know potentially violate our policy sure. from the issues that maybe create unnecessary drama and stress in the workplace that that maybe are not our desired behaviors from a, a leader, but also don't necessarily cross that line into sure. violating our policy. Sure. So of course our policies, you know, are are the foundation of what we expect from people in terms of behavior, um, in terms of treating people with respect. 
I've heard some things that, that make me wonder if that's being followed. Sure. Um, treating people in a fair way, right? Be, being made to feel like you're being set up is not certainly something that is um, what we hope to do. Sure. And, and certainly, Just the timing is kind of... Of course, and, and that's why I'm sitting here today to, to you know, try to find a way to navigate this ship forward. Sure. Um, obviously, the last month for you and for her, frankly, have been very uh, emotional and stressful. Absolutely. And um, I'm, I'm sorry that that had to be the way it was, but while we were investigating the environmental side, which obviously had pretty serious ramifications on sure. the project itself, on you know individuals involved, we we uh, we had to take the time to do that right. And while that was going on, is when these other issues started to flood in. And and I think that um, you know, and a lot of these issues, um, the reason they're being brought up now um, is nobody felt um, comfortable mm -hmm. in that office. Um, as far as being able to question her, yep. she, nobody can question her. She's always right. If you question her, you basically become ostracized from the others. Um, so Ronnie is just a yes man. Uh, no matter what she says, it could be something about me, Chris, Katie in the office. She's just agreeing. They're not going to stand up to her and say, well, no, you know, I, I, I believe it's this way. They can't even do that. Nobody feels like they can even do that. Um, we can't. I, nobody felt like she could be approached with any of this. Um, and frankly, nobody thought that she could change as a, result, uh, as a result of this. Ronnie has said that he believes that she cannot change. Katie has said that she believes that she cannot change. Um, Chris hasn't really stated, you know, one way or the other. But I, I am a, a, you know, I'm a human being. I care about other people's mm -hmm. feelings. I don't want to see somebody get hurt. I don't want to see them lose their job. Mm -hmm. If there, you know, if there's a way um, that something could be done uh, to kind of make her aware of it so that maybe she could get some therapy or some el something else. Um, I was to the point uh, just a couple of days ago where um, I had set up a meeting with everybody. We were trying to set up a day where they were going to come over to my house, we were going to eat dinner and come up with a plan as far as what we would um, push for going forward um, if asked. And uh, you know, I came up with a couple of different ideas. One of them was me, um, you know, having this would be the first time anybody's really ever stood up to her or said something that, that's not to her liking. Me going in there and just uh, you know expre expressing how much I look up to her and uh, how I, I you know I appreciate her as a manager and I respect her as a manager. But then saying, hey, I'm going to need you to listen um, to what I have to say for the next you know five to ten minutes um, and just let me talk through it first. And I was going to lay out you know kind of exactly what she was doing in the hopes that she could come to you guys and we could work together. To, to get her some sort of um, help. Um, and I, I've been, you know, kind of, you know, we've been trying to, to, to figure out a way if there's a, a way possible for this to work. Um, but after what happened on Friday, uh, I, I, so what, what are I, some I, I feel incredibly, incredibly hurt from this. So. What are some of the other ideas you had about trying to figure out Sure. One was for me to just go in there. Um, another one was to talk to Teresa and say, hey, this is what I'd like to do. You know, I, either I could take the lead on it or she can. And, and, and you know, Chris and I could sit up across from each other and you could, you know, sit off to the side just to make sure that, you know, nobody talks over to anybody else um, or anything along those lines. Um, so that was number two. Um, we discussed some of the things that we would want in the office if um, she were to be rehabbed um, to include uh, you know, classes, um, you know, potential therapy. Um, <clears throat> what's the other one? Give me one second. Yeah. Oh, uh, we would, I believe it would be required. Um, it, it would be needed for it to actually work. Somebody to, to stand in in an office for basically a month and just observe, you know, the interactions and anything else. And if anything is you know, noted from her behavior that's been pointed out to her, that, that person could then have a talk or, you know, with her. Um, along those lines. It's to that point that it's that bad um, that, you know, again, not wanting to hurt another human being, I, I, I'm, I'm done with it. You know, she's going to sit here and try to, it feels like set me up um, uh, during this process, slander my name, question my military experience. It's, 
It's I'm ridiculous. What, what is your question? I, I did mean to ask you that too. I know you sent me copies. Sure. Your, but I didn't mean to Ronnie, um, she questioned whether I was a Marine or not. Uh, and Ronnie told me about this before the meeting. Um, so, uh, you know, I felt attacked, obviously. So I sent her, you know, some pictures of me and the Marines in my dress blues, my honor graduate certificate of commendation, um, sent the same thing to Ronnie. And I shouldn't have to do that <laughs> in my workplace um, just to prove that I'm a Marine. What was, what was, what was her basis for the question? You know. She's attacking me, so I don't know what it is. And that was recent? That's very recent. So what did, what exactly did she, did Ronnie tell you that she, she said? You would have to ask him on that one. Oh, okay. Um, he just told me that she. Well, that's what I mean. What did he tell you? He, all that he told me was that she had questioned me being a Marine or, or being in the Marines. Okay. So going back a minute, you said that, you know, you're done. What does that mean? I was done wanting to be a part of bringing anything to the table to help her. Um, okay. I took this as a, a huge stab in the side. Um, couldn't. <laughs> I've been hurt a lot. You want to take a few minutes? You want to take a few minutes? It'll be okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, just give me a second. Sure. Sorry. No, it's okay. I'll be okay. Thank you, Bill. I've just been hurt a lot um, during this process. It's continual. It's not once every three months. It's once every three days. It's something. She finds a way to, to have you thinking about her and... and questioning things for three or four hours a day you know it's, it's small things like you know uh you know calling you on a on a day off and and stuff like that and asking you why you why did you have your work phone on you it's a day off i mean i got my work phone it's sitting over there in the other room i gotta check it no <laughs> just stuff like that just just finding a way to you know to, to get under um my skin and I, I it's been unwarranted i i don't know what i've done the only thing i can believe is that she might feel threatened by me to the others um, they've been there a while she kind of has a grip on them they're yes people um, to her uh, and I question uh, in and never in front of them and always in a polite way I've, I've questioned some of the environmental practices um, but I too have to kind of be a yes man in there I, I I've, I've done very little questioning of her the very first time I've ever spoken out to her not even back to her was about the cell phone thing on Friday when she when she questioned my cell phone use and I was sitting there and I, I went outside for 20 minutes and I looked at my thing I had texted 21 different uh, text threads once every 26 minutes I had done a work text thread so if it looks like I'm on my phone a lot I am on my phone a lot and I explained to her I don't even text with my wife anymore as a result of our separation we decided there's no more texting uh, when we got back together um, that it was it was contributing to to the issues and I got no friends in the area so who in the world am I texting I was texting Katie at the time talking about you know ways forward talking about the the different options um, when she she came in there um, using the person right using your personal phone and I think that's what correct. her perception is is that you're on your personal phone Cor correct and she says it as the others um, are upset about this the others will say that they are not upset about this. They have not brought this up to, to her at all, mm -hmm. and that she is just doing this. Um, I am from here to a little bit past that wall, direct to her office. This is her, you know, that's me, straight direct. I'm sitting here, my computer, she can see that. If I turn around, you know, turn to the side and, and do anything on the phone, she can see that. I'm the only one that she can see. Uh, you know, Ronnie's over there, can't see him. Katie's right next to her, can't see him. Chris is over there, can't see him. 